Welcome to this episode of Music Matters with Daryl Craig Harris and Music Tribes Unite News. Talking about all things music with celebrities, artists, music business insiders and more. Paula Vera, how are you doing today? I'm great, though. How are you doing? I'm good. So I'm in Las Vegas. So tell us where you are. I'm in France, um, in the countryside, uh, about an hour away from Bordeaux, in That's southwest. A place. That's a very nice place to be from. <laughs> it really is. Today is absolutely beautiful. There's sunshine everywhere. It's just glorious. It's been really cold recently, so it's just it's come at the perfect time. Awesome. So you're actually originally you're from uh, are you from London or you're from the UK? But what 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 part of the UK? Yeah. I, well, I was born in London. I've lived in quite a few parts of the UK though. Uh, I've lived in Scotland for a while in my uh, youth, <laughs> but I spent quite a lot of time in the southeast uh, of the UK. Yeah. So mainly from London, I'd say. Yeah. Awesome. So you're an amazing uh, musician and vocalist, um, songwriter, composer. You've had um, two albums out recently, Spellbound and Addicted, I think was your last full album. Um, You have a new single coming out, which is, I think you said it was Jack of All Trades. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So um, the story behind that is so the single's called Jack of All Trades. And uh, I actually uh, recorded it a few years ago, um, right in the midst of uh, motherhood with my second child, actually. <laughs> she was only about like four or five months old or something. And I thought, I'm going to go to a studio and write a song. Um, and I haven't put it out since. Um, and so I thought, actually, I feel like now's the time because I feel like being a jack of all trades kind of really, I really feel like it resonates with me right now. And, and it's all about um, not being able to, uh, you know, pick one I don't know how to put it, what one line of expertise because I'm just so interested and excited by everything and it goes on about that in the song and that's kind of my story really. <laughs> awesome, yeah, and so you are a very busy person because you're um, obviously a mom, a recording artist, um, you do live dates, but then the other part of your career, a big part is teaching. So you're a professor yeah. at the Bordeaux Conservatoire, which is quite prestigious. Um, yeah. And also you do, you said you do clinics in, in other parts of uh, Europe. So how did you how did you first let's back up a little bit how did you first start you were quite young when you first started playing piano and and doing all that tell us that story yeah i'm well how did i start that's a really good question um well i think i started the piano i think i was about it was fairly late but still young in terms of life i suppose i was about 13 i think um but I've always kind of been really into music and uh, I used to uh, sing a lot at school and um, then I started playing the piano and I actually played the double bass, believe it or not. Very school. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got roped into it because my sister's a violinist and I had to sit outside her room, you know, whenever, whenever she had a lesson. And one day the teacher came in and said, oh, would you come and play the two open string notes on the double bass? <laughs> so I was like, I can do that. <laughs> And so I did that and then ended up getting roped into all sorts of orchestra and things, which I absolutely love. I love the bass. Um, And then started playing piano and it just kind of grew from there. And uh, the singing, well, in terms of jazz singing, I actually was in this kind of school jazz band playing bass. And then one day the teacher asked me whether I'd like to have a go at singing. And I did. And I ended up starting singing with him on his gigs when I was at school, you know. Yeah, it's (laughs) funny, you know, it's Right. It's funny how that is, because that's kind of that was, you know, I'm a bass player and that kind of happened by accident. So you never know how how life's going to it kind of has a plan. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's awesome. So then you um, so you kind of grew up, you went actually have gone to some really amazing schools in in, uh, in London. Tell us about that. Yeah, I've been super lucky. Honestly, it's, I sometimes pinch myself with the luck I've had (laughs) uh, within that. But yeah, I did. I went to uh, so um, I went to music college like you know, at 18 and I went to Trinity College of Music, which is a fantastic school in Mm -hmm. London, uh, just by the river. I don't know if you've been to Greenwich, but uh, there's a lovely uh, music school there. I've actually, yeah. You have? Awesome. Yeah. Oh, have you been That's to Trinity? Our good, friend, our good friend Fiona Ross. <laughs> was, was, Brilliant. Our, and it was another jazz have you writer. Seen it? It's in the Royal Naval College. So it's this I've, kind of glorious yep. building. That is an absolutely oh, beautiful. beautiful place. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I was really lucky. I spent four years there doing my undergraduate degree. And then um, after that, I, I, uh, I got a scholarship to do a master's at the Royal Academy of Music. 
talked to it. Wow. Yeah. So That's amazing. You know, and there's, yeah, and there's so many, I mean, obviously in London too, just like New York or, or, London, or Paris is such a huge hub for, for artists and musicians. And so how, how did you tell me the story about coming to France and, and when, when did you move to France? So the story about France is um, when I was at Trinity, one of my um, old um, teachers there, well, a lecturer who's, who's fantastic, her name's Andrea Vicari. She's an amazing uh, jazz pianist. She, um, she was teaching there and she, she uh, asked me whether I'd be up for coming to teach on her summer school. And she runs a summer school in France every year. And it's been going a long time now. It's quite established. It's the Dordogne Jazz Summer School. And she had never had any vocal teaching there. And uh, we uh, we got on quite well. And she said, oh, would you like to have a go at teaching? And I was, uh, you know, I was 25. And I was really excited about this opportunity to go to France and teach. Exactly, and yeah. Like what's, a, what's, a holiday. What, what, and... What's that to like, right? <laughs> right. And I was, I was like my first proper job, you know, so I got very excited. And uh, Anna went to France to do that. And then I met my now husband <laughs> on the course. It's always, <laughs> because a, it's his always parents, a boy. <laughs> that's it. His parents actually run the venue where this course is held. And it's a crazy story, actually. The venue is a, um, a chateau, but like a ruin chateau from the ninth century. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. That they bought um, about, oh, I can't remember, it must be about 40 or 50 years ago, like a, a bunch of people bought it together and this is Manu's family um, and a few others and then they turned it into this wonderful venue to run music events and they run all sorts of summer schools there and yoga and all sorts and that's how uh, you met. That's, well yeah. that's a great story <laughs> that's that's a hard story to be um, so then <laughs> so you um so you actually uh teaching at the Bordeaux Conservatoire is is very that's a very prestigious gig then tell me about getting that that position and how long have you actually been there oh i've been there a little while i've been there since 2014 oh, and okay. um well i came across it completely by accident because i started playing in this band uh, with an amazing uh, a great american singer and she plays the drums as well her name's rachel madison and she runs a band called the sophisticated ladies nice and uh, i started <laughs> playing with her it's very sophisticated and um and she said to me oh they're looking for a, a singing teacher you know a jazz specialist at the conservatoire because they've never had one before because up until that point all the singers had been taught by classical singers they didn't have right. anybody that was teaching it improvisation or anything and, and was that, said, oh, was that kind of was that kind of controversial when they decided to do that or how, how was that <sighs> she gave me the impression that it might have been i think yeah i think it was i think it was like a new step for them at this point mm -hmm. Um, and so they created this position for this fictitious person. Um, and I'd only been in France a year, so I could barely speak French. <laughs> and she was like, well, and I was like, well, how do I apply for this job? Like, how do I even, I don't even know. And she said, well, look, just, um, you know, I, she found the address of the person to send it to. And I just, it was really random, Daryl. I, I literally just sent my CV off and like a covering letter that I'd wrote in really bad French. And <laughs> <laughs> and sent it and just hoped that someone would reply and I didn't get any reply for months so I just thought oh well I'm you know they've, I'm sure they've gone with somebody else and that's normal right. and then all of a sudden I got a letter out of the blue saying oh would you like to come to uh, for an interview <laughs> so then all of a sudden I had to learn all the all the theory terms in French I was like you right know, so the, for, those that have, <laughs> for those that have not been to France the speaking French <laughs> and speaking proper French is a very important thing <laughs> so we should lay that we should lay that groundwork <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, because people like to speak French in France, believe it or not. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's radical, isn't it? Yeah. So instead of saying, you know, um, C, D, E, F, G, I had to go do, ré, mi, fa, sol. So I had to learn all the notes. Right. I had to learn, you know, majeur, mineur, demi, diminué. I had to learn, like, what a turnaround was in French, like Anatole, like everything. I was like, it was so, it was such a trip. Um, but I did it. I meant, well, I did it enough to get through the interview. What can I say? Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that and the rest is history so i've been there since then yeah but actually you know teaching teaching jazz music obviously a lot of jazz classic jazz is in english so that's actually you kind of yeah. want somebody that can speak proper english to teach them if totally. you want to get a real if you really want to get a good a good lesson right i think 
I'll be honest with you, I think that played a huge role. I think they thought, okay, she'll probably pick up the French, hopefully. But at least she's, you know, she, <laughs> she up, should be all right at the English the part, one would hope. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, 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 well, I, you know, I used to work with a lot of French Canadians with, with Cirque, and I know the whole French story with that the language. It's, and it's great. I mean, and French, uh, speaking French, that's such a lyrical language to begin with. And uh, it's a beautiful oh, language. It, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not oh, bagging, yeah. I'm not bagging on the French, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so fun, isn't it? Being able to play with all the languages now. I just, I love yeah, it. Yeah. And it I think, it so much and I think, right. And it's nice to be able to mix um, musicians from different cultures. You actually mentioned that your mother um, is from South yeah. America, right? That's right. My mother's Venezuelan. Yeah. So I grew up speaking um, Spanish um, a bit at home. Yeah, which is since I'm a bit rusty now since I'm speaking French all the time. So, but I do keep in touch with my cousins in Venezuela, and I and I have to like really think about it when I speak Spanish. But yeah, I love Spanish. I'd love to spend more time yeah. um, getting getting that together. It's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, and language. it's another it's yeah. it's another amazing musical language too, right? To sing it. Totally. Yeah, yeah, and the music, oh, just fantastic. Yeah. So, so tell me, so your music is interesting, and uh, it's actually. Um, it's jazz, but it's actually a lot of things. It's world music, it, it's soul and, and funk, and it's really interesting. What were your, some of your influences uh, growing up? Oh, my goodness. What a question. So many influences. Um, I think I just love everything. I mean, as a, because I play the piano and I've, I love singing and playing, uh, definitely singer pianists feature kind of high up there, um, like Stevie Wonder and that King Cole, Harry Connick, um, you know, Dana Kroll. And then I love loads of pop singer pianists as well, like Sarah Bareilles, um, you know, Ben Folds. I've certainly gone through like phases of obs obsession with all of yeah. those kind of guys and girls. Um, after that, I mean, loads of classical music playing double bass in, this, in the orchestra and loads of choral music, just everything. I just love music. So it's really hard to say what all my influences are, but there are a turn. Sure. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's great because that, that makes your, your music very accessible and, and it's nice yeah. to hear the different influences, which you do, which is awesome. Um, when you're, so when you're gonna compose an album, you're gonna compose a song, what's your process for that? Okay, well, I go through, I try out all sorts of different things actually. Um, it depends very much. Sometimes it's text driven and I come up with an idea for a text and I kind of, I go through it and I make the rhymes match up or I make certain internal structures work or, and I get, so I get like a tight kind of text together and I really like that. And then afterwards I try to figure out, you know, a melody that might go with that or a groove. Um, and sometimes it's the inverse where I'll come up with a melody first and then I'm searching for generally vowel sounds that I like or I tend to be quite instinctive about it like I'll go with just like what do I instinctively want to sing on that and then I try to find a word that goes with it and try to match the meaning so I, I have actually tried all sorts of um, techniques I've also had a go at being quite you know prosaic about it in the sense of like trying to write to um, I, I really love writing to um, oh what's the word I've, I've forgotten I can't speak anymore but you know when you have a, like a specific aim in, in set so sometimes I, I go for that yeah writing to brief I suppose is the word I'm looking for so I like right. that as well um, mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah I haven't really answered the question have I I like doing all of those things um I'm quite open-minded about it I don't have one approach is what I'd say yeah. yeah, it's interesting too because you know you have sort of the Nashville thing where they have a, a writing appointments. That always, sure. to me, it always kind of felt a little funny. But then again, you understand <laughs> it because that's what they're doing. Is that is it like yeah. when you do you just write when the inspiration hits you, or with your you have kind of a crazy schedule? How do you how do you work all that yeah. out? Well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But yeah, like I've gone through phases where I have gone right this week. I'm writing. And then I'll just be like, I'll knock out a song a day and I'll make that my goal. And no matter what, that's what I will do. And mm. I will just finish it, even if it's just a working lyric, even if it's just something that for now is fine and then I'll tighten it up later. And then I have times where like an event has hit me in such a way that I feel like so strongly that I need to write about it, that I'll then go and write some text and then I'll try and piece that together. And that might take a time. I mean, I've got a song that I've written. Um, I wrote actually with all everything that was going on with George Floyd really it really resonated with me really strongly and I, I right. wrote a lyric about that and and that was very much related to that one event and so you know sometimes that happens where something kind of really hits you and you feel like you have to kind of 
do something about it. Yeah. And, and I, then I, other as, times you're waiting, you know. Right. And as yeah, artists, we, we sort of have to stay open to those different little inspirations and kind of keep your eyes open, right? Because things, inspiration, I mean, you have children. I'm sure you get inspirations from them every day too. Yeah. Or... Yeah. I mean, I have to say in the last few years, writing, I mean, it's been hard. I, I definitely struggle with with finding the time to write uh, since since I've had the kids. But um, I do tend to work quite well under pressure. Like if I set myself a deadline, I tend to be quite good. And also I love co-writing for that reason because co-writing is great, isn't it? Right. It I was, was going to ask you about that. So collaboration, tell me about that. Yeah, well, it's not something I did a huge amount of before, um, but it's something that I've been getting into recently and I'm really enjoying it. And I definitely feel like I want to do more and more of it. Um, so I've been collaborating, not so much on the writing yet, so much, a lot of the time it's been me writing still, um, and then collaborating with various people, like either on production or mm. arranging. So I've been working with a few different people. There's this a, a lovely musician called Mark Delay from Paris, and we've been working on some arrangements of some stuff that will come out soon. And I've been working with a great uh, young beat maker, actually doing some kind of more awesome. kind of EDM tracks. His yeah. name's Joey it's, uh, Tingen, so he's fantastic. And so I've been trying all sorts of stuff out, really. Yeah. So I love nice. It. That, yeah, and it's so nice that you're open to trying different styles because a lot, a lot of times we think of academics, especially in, in you know, really serious uh, schools that are, and that school is known obviously for their classical. We always think of them as like, they're on a rigid thing and it's like, you know, but that's all changed really, right? With the modern social media and the, the modern influences. I hope so. I feel to, like- To some extent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like I've always been like that and I've always, as a result, struggled with exactly that. So I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um, and it takes a while to get to the point where you get to the point where you say, actually, do you know what? I think I just want to do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and so what if people go, well, it's not very jazz of you or whatever. Yeah. You know, your, just, your faculty well, members are like, oh, so you're playing jazz, are you? <laughs> yeah. I kind of, I kind of so over that. I just, I feel like, do you know what? If any of my faculty members came up to me and were like, oh, well, you know, what about that dance track? I'd be like, yeah, it was really fun. I, I loved it. I think I feel I've come to that point now where I feel I could own it. Whereas I know mm. what you mean. I think when I was younger, I was definitely trying to like desperately get everyone to just be like, approve me, approve me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I mean, we all want that, especially, you know, when, when you're at going to these amazing schools and there are amazing people that, that are um, some of the best classical players in the world go to those schools or classical singers and, and all that. So it, I think it's, but then again, too, it's also amazing to get that kind of influence and, and to see how people work. You know, having having like you said, you, you're really good at, at setting a task, getting it done. And as a musician, especially jazz musicians, we're all, not always known for being able to do that. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I suppose as well. I mean, I think a lot about uh, a lot of my students and I really think I kind of. I can see that that's the world they're in now. And it's definitely much more acceptable now than it ever was to be like mm. that, to be an artist that's releasing, you know, a ballad one month and then a, a banging, you know, dance tune the next month. And it, it seems to be much more, uh, people seem to be much more accepting of that now. And I think that's wonderful. And wouldn't it be wonderful if that's also what they're seeing, you know, their teachers doing as well. So they see that, you know, I we're all in the same boat, aren't we? We're all in the same thing together. Um, isn't that lovely? We can share yeah, it. and you want to you want to create a performance, create a song, get get stuff yeah. out there. And that's that's as an artist, you sort of have to. Otherwise, we we kind of wither, right? Yeah, I mean, saying that if you feel, I th I think it's each to his own. You know, if as an artist you feel really strongly that you resonate with one particular genre and that you know that completes you and that is kind of the perfect. I don't know summarization of what you feel then i think that's wonderful and you should express that but at the same time if you're a bit you know schizophrenic like i am and seems to like everything i think <laughs> right. that should be also allowed and we shouldn't be in fear of like someone judging that as being less than because what is less than really i mean it's all music and yeah. there's always going to be somebody that's going to appreciate it somewhere right and and really if there's if there is a less than it's just not ever tried right right yeah
yeah yeah as long you have as to be, that have to be we're just little, trying to share yeah and you have to be a little brave you have to be a little brave and, and push through and <laughs> make it happen so t- <laughs> yes. tell me about your um tell me about your new single how that come about and, and when's that is that already out or when's it gonna be released yeah it's already out um so i just i put it out a few weeks ago and as i said it was actually something i've been sitting on for a long time that i felt uh you know i want to put it out and so I'm just gonna put it out. So it was quite, it was quite impulsive. So yeah. it's out uh, and it's everywhere. So if anyone's interested, it's called Jack of All Trades and, and it's on Spotify and you can download it. And that's kind of to kick off a, a cycle of other things that are gonna be released in the next few months. I've got some other releases that are planned. Um, awesome. And that's the idea, yeah. And they're all gonna be different. So if you don't yeah. like this one, tune in for the next one. <laughs> <'Cause> you <might laughs> there you like go. It. <laughs> yeah. So you, um, obviously you dealt with the whole COVID thing. We've all dealt with that stuff. So when, oh goodness, when you were, yeah. when that was going on, were you, um, were you writing a lot or how were, how were you, because obviously now you're kind of ready to get out there and start rocking again. But what was that situation for you? Were you kind of just, hey, I'm going to create or how did you approach it? <sighs> uh, it was creative in COVID a bit but not as much as I'd like to have been because I was um, representative of many people that were working at home with uh, small children. My daughter turned two in lockdown wow, yeah. and uh, my son turned four and there was no schools. <laughs> right. So you're trying to do and your... Yeah, your right. You te- and we were, were all te- meant to be teaching. Yeah. Right, I was teaching exactly. on Zoom all the time. <laughs> That's, which, yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of mad because I was like, you know, teaching students and then there'd be a two-year-old walk in going, Mama, and you'd be like, okay, welcome. I just <laughs> yeah. this child. Yeah. You know, but so that's... that was crazy. But <laughs> no, as I say, that's, that's great to do. You kept teaching and kept going because I think for creatives, we have to keep doing stuff. Otherwise, it it's, gets challenging, right? Just emotionally. Yeah, I did definitely spend a lot of time uh, during lockdown, though, much more time than I normally would. I went down to my office and I was recording things and, um, you know, making reference tracks and putting things down. So it was it was a fruitful time for sure. But I remember it just being like manically chaotic, which was a weird thing to say because suddenly the world stopped, right? But it didn't feel like it stopped for, for me at all because I was just at home trying to fit in all these Zoom classes, plus <laughs> just trying to get my kids through, you know, three meals a day and all the snacks. <laughs> right yeah i mean you have to deal with real life too no. right? Yeah. right and then you feel this pressure because you see all your friends out there you know doing these kind of performances and you're like oh i should be performing but how am i going to do that yeah, i did do right. one live stream though we managed one live stream which was quite a technological feat um but incredible and we had so much fun and it was like the first time i played in like months it was it was mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The live, you know, the live stream thing, because I, you know, that's part of what I, I've, I've been doing. We were doing those with Sure mm. before, before COVID, and um, on our music pages, and and uh, you know, that's quite a, it's a cool outlet because you're reaching people globally. Um, yeah. T- talk, do you, do you talk with your students about like that kind of thing, about social media and performing and arts, and what's your take on that? That's such a good question. We don't talk about it as much as I think we should. Um. None of my students talk to me about live streaming, um, mainly because I think live streaming is such, it does demand quite a lot of technical know-how to do it right, doesn't it? I mean, let's be honest. You need to yeah. have a certain level of equipment and you have to have a space. Like a lot of my students are living in the city. They don't have a space where there's enough, you know, sound isolation to be able to produce anything of quality. Right. So that's, they certainly weren't live streaming, but, um, in terms of the rest social media i mean i'm always flawed and and totally in awe and inspiration of so many of my students who are, are really on it i mean now you know they're making all these videos that coming out looking super pro they're getting gigs you know it's it's, a, it's really you know really hustly much more than ever before i think it's fantastic yeah, yeah and it's part of, it's part of the world we live in plus it's a great outlet you can meet you can collaborate with people around the world right it's a great leveler isn't it it allows everybody kind of an opportunity to to get seen and, and notice. So I think that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but the only thing that's slightly um, uh, troubling about it is that we, well, we're expected to do everything, aren't we? And it dissipates our energy away from the music a lot of the time because we spend like that much time trying to get the music done and all the rest of the time trying to get the Instagram right and the Facebook right. And, exactly. And, yeah. you know, 
And you, they get that question, you know, is the gig tonight more important or is the video of the gig that I'm going to repost more important? You know, all these right. yep. things. And it's like, what are we even doing music for if that's what we're getting into? I mean, yeah, it, it's, and, a, it's um, a complicated question. I think I think everybody's dealing with that as artists. Like, that's important. I talk to a lot of people like, hey, I don't do social media. I'm like, well, I get that. But then again, too, if you're trying to release music and, and doing those things, that's such an easy way to, to go with, you know, letting people know, right? I think it's essential because it's kind of the only way that, I mean, unless you have some kind of mega marketing budget, but even with a mega marketing budget, I mean, it would have to be really mega to get anything <laughs> like TV <laughs> or press remotely, you know, right. anything yeah. like social media. So yeah, it's, it's incredibly important, but it does put a lot of pressure on the performers today. And it, it, because you're spending enough time trying to just get your skills together in terms of your art, right. About, you know, becoming a good singer or becoming a good musician, good pianist, writing good arrangements, writing good songs, getting the album together, making sure it's recorded nicely. And then on top of that, you've got to think about, okay, how am I going to make it visible to the world? You know, how am I going to get people to review it or how am I going to, it's just a whole other a, set of a, issues. It's a whole thing. And then you also basically as an independent artist, you're, you're your own publicist as well and your own manager. Right. So that's, that's all in the mix. <laughs> so. Right. And then you're trying to earn a living to just keep a roof over your head. Right. So how does that work in terms of time? It's, and then, you know, we all obviously became musicians because we love music and that does require a certain investment of time and energy right you know and that's being taken away from at the moment and so uh, uh, i think i struggle with that probably like everyone struggles with that for sure yeah yeah, yeah. and it's, it's 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 all part of the deal i guess we we figure it out but um tell me about um your advice to young artists young musicians because you you have a unique perspective being a professor and 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 having kind of dealt with all that and from a bunch of different angles so let me know what what's some of the lessons you've learned along the way Oh, wow. That's a very deep question. Um, it's kind of a big, broad question. But. <laughs> yeah. Lessons about, about, um, about what, uh, about the music industry specifically, or about being a musician? Well, advice that you would give young artists that would, I want to do, want to create and want to, want to write their own music and all that kind of thing. Okay. Well, I think I'm just going to repeat advice that I've been given that I think is really, um, well, I hope it, I'm, I'm definitely living by this, advice, <laughs> which is tenacity. <laughs> yeah. I was given this advice more than anything. It's all about hanging on and just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep producing at whatever rate you can, depending on what's going on in your life at that time, but just keep putting things out there, keep moving forward and just hold on because that seems to be from what I see now, a lot of people that are, I look up to have been building this career for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and it's not a short term thing. So, you know, it, it's all in the interest of the long term goal is to just hold on and keep going and keep building, you know, and not not thinking too much of, of the micro, you know, is this single a success or is this album a success, but try to think more about the bigger picture. Um, that's what I would say. Try to build your skills as much as you can in for that long, long game. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and that, yeah. I think that, that's, I mean, that's great advice. And that's something that I've, I've found in my own career. I've known a lot of very talented people, but they, they didn't, they weren't willing to persevere. And, and, yeah. and it's hard. It's, you know, we put our souls it's into what so we do. Hard. Yeah. We yeah. put our souls into what we do. And sometimes it's, people don't always accept it and you have to be able to okay, okay well that's good that's your opinion I gotta keep going <laughs> totally and the funny thing is isn't it when you talk to people who are not non-musicians they find what we do so strange <laughs> yeah, they, think, they think we're they think we're mad and crazy and we probably are but... <laughs> totally, because they're like this doesn't merit this level of sacrifice I mean you're not getting paid very much <laughs> right, exactly. and you're like you're right I'm not but it's so important um you know it's that fire isn't it and that drive that keeps you going um, and it's difficult to explain. And that's why, you know, often they say, you know, you're a musician and it's, you're a musician more because you can't not be one. <laughs> yeah. But there, yeah. In a way there's truth to that because that really, it grabs your soul as you know, mm. and, and you can, you can, you know, we, we'll, we'll go out and get a regular job and then, and then we'll go, ah, uh, but then you're, you're fortunate because you have a regular job. That's also 
a very awesome job with with music and and uh, yeah, that, that's I also a unique situation. Yeah, I recognize that. Yeah, right. Yeah, completely. And I and I made, but I made that as a conscious decision um, because I well, like everybody, stumbled into the teaching thing a bit accidentally. Uh, most people, you know, at college, I started doing a bit of teaching training and a bit of money whilst I was going through college. But then I realized I actually really really liked it. And everyone said I was quite good at it. So <laughs> I just thought, oh, this is quite good. And um, and so then I kind of kept going with that and um, shadowed a lot of teachers that I really respected and learned a lot from them and then continued to build my own training in that. You know, I, I, I took um, I took all the Estill exams to become an Estill master trainer. So I've never kind of stopped on that front because not only does it really, it, I'm really passionate about it, I find it really interesting to try and find new ways of being able to help people achieve what they want to achieve. But also just myself, it is exactly as you say, it's such a cool job, isn't it? It's it's still related to music, but it's also you're doing something that's not just, you know, me, me, me all the time, not just, you know, check out my single, check out my music. It's also, you know, I can help some other people um, get them where they want to be, too. And isn't that brilliant? You know? Yeah. And you're surrounded by some and you're actually surrounded by people as yourself that are at, really at the best and the top level of what they do, which is awesome. No matter what, no matter what you do in life, if you could be in that situation, you're going to learn so much, right? Yeah, but that doesn't come overnight, though. That comes, yeah. It's exactly as you're saying. It's holding on, isn't it? And just, yeah, building yeah. up and building up. Because obviously, my first teaching job was wasn't that. You know, my first teaching job was teaching. You know, I can't remember where it was in a little music school singing. Yeah, you know, singing to the, to hey, teaching, the teaching, music. especially teaching uh, music is hard because. Sometimes it's sometimes you 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 don't always get the most talented folks, but you make it work. That, that's why you're there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. There are all sorts of challenges, but a big part of that is trying to read the person as well and trying to think, okay, what are you actually here for? You know, what do you really need? For right? Them? Can I? Yeah, and not know, everybody wants to be. Can I help you? Not everybody wants to be. You know, uh, uh, an opera singer at the Met. Some people just want to. They want to sing. They want to learn, and that's that. That's awesome too, right? Absolutely, yeah, it's been fantastic. I think it's all <laughs> tell great. us, um, yeah, tell us how people can find you on on your social media. Speaking of social media, well, <laughs> I am on social media. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Paula Vera Music. You can find me on Facebook at I think it's Paula Vera as well. It might be Paula Vera Music. I'm not sure. Um, and you can we'll find, find me at my website paulavera I awesome. think that's it for social media. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I have well, a YouTube I, channel as well. <laughs> okay, awesome. And yeah, and you have a lot of great videos, so people should definitely check oh, that out you. and check out your music. Mm -hmm. I really love what yeah, you do. Cool. And uh, we have a lot of mutual friends, I should mention. Uh, Fiona mm -hmm. Ross, who's uh, with Women in Jazz uh, in London. Fantastic. An amazing yeah. singer and, and producer. And then our friend Nigel, Nigel J with uh, Music Tribes uh, Unite. And uh, yeah. he's the one that connected us, so that's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, uh, people, great, people great can watch this, uh, the watch the video on Music Crowns in London, and also uh, Bass and Guitar Love in Italy. And then we have our Aldi outlets. So, I really appreciate your time. I know you're very busy. <laughs> and, uh, oh, thank you so much. No, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for fitting me in. <laughs> you're oh, very yeah, busy no, too. <laughs> well, it's 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 all it's all good. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to get to France sometime soon because I love oh, the art. Be wonderful. I love the art, the music, and, and lots of, I have a lot of nice friends in France, so. Well, you definitely have to get in touch. We'll have to play together. I can hook that up, so get in touch when you can. Okay, no, yeah. See you. Let's do that. We'll <laughs> hang out with our friend Nigel and drink wine, so that, that's a good, oh, that's a good, that's a good. Even French, better. <laughs> yeah, that's a good France bonus, right? <laughs> totally. The wine is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, <laughs> awesome. Hey, thank you so much, Paula. Um, please, everybody, please check her out. Please find her on social, and we'll put all the links in the podcast episode as well, so thank you so much. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. Subscribe to our podcast. Follow us on our social media channels for upcoming guest announcements. And keep up with the latest at musictribesunite.news.